Children Act, providing legal representation for all unaccompanied children, among five or six other provisions. I hope you'll take a look at it. Senator Tillis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you all for being here. And uh, Director Marcos, <clears throat> over the uh, the course of the Biden administration, is the is is the estimate right or approximately 430,000 unaccompanied uh, minors who have been placed? Is that roughly accurate? Roughly accurate. Uh, can you give me an idea of what standard operating procedure is? So, so after you've chosen or after you've made the decision to place this child, what is standard operating procedure, say, over the, the course of the year following in terms of content? I'm trying to get some sense of exactly what role you play after placement. Thank you, Senator. Um, and this is where uh, we are going beyond what is required of us right now, yeah. but we know that it's not enough. Everyone on our team wants to, yeah. oh, to I do. Oh, I understand. I'm not being crazy. I, I, I really want to go back. And uh, th there was a comment made that I think is very, very important. I think you can apply the same logic to asylum proceedings when we find out about 80% are adjudicated as not having a valid uh, basis for granting asylum. I think that it, it would seem logical, given the numbers that we're talking about over time, that probably about 80% of the unaccompanied children, so, someone made the comment they're escaping very dangerous settings, and, and many of them are. Um, but many of them are trying to get to a country of opportunity. We should take that as a compliment, but in reality, it's a bit of an insult in terms of how they get here. The parents or family members are paying money to cartels. Cartels are making almost a billion dollars a year in human trafficking. People are getting hurt, traumatized, and, and out here. Others are dying. Um, so I think one thing we need to do, one of the reasons you can't really do what you want to do is you simply have too many. And that is not your problem to fix. That's a problem of the administration to fix because when the Biden administration came in, we saw nearly a fourfold increase and uh, border crossings. The area that I'm most concerned with is in the gotaways. One of the concerns that I have with these 430,000 unaccompanied minors who have been placed is they're going in communities where, since uh, President Biden's taken office, one and a half million gotaways are going to. You know, why would anybody choose to try and evade apprehension at the border based on the way the United States is dealing with people who come across the border illegally today. Why would anybody do that unless they had uh, nefarious uh, reasons or some background that they didn't want to have uh, be made known when they're apprehended and they're being vetted by uh, customs or border patrol? These are dangerous people going in these communities. I talk with uh, sheriffs all the time. I agree with uh, Senator Grassley that these gotaways, not all of them, some of them may just be dumb and not recognizing how easy it is just to present yourself at a border, uh, uh, to border patrol agency, but many of them have to be here for malign purposes. Many of them go to the communities that they identify with and exploit these unaccompanied children and the community as a whole. Um, so uh, going back, what in, in your ideal, let's say that your problem, could, could you do that comprehensive case management if the volume you were dealing with was 20% of what you're dealing with today? Let's say current funding, current resources, stay steady. You have only one in five as many to deal with in a given day. What would that look like in terms of true, responsible, engaged case management for an unaccompanied minor that's been placed? Senator, I would have to, I would have to yeah. do well, some I, figuring, I but it, yes, of it, course, it, it would, would probably improve the situation. Yes. Uh, and, and so the, I, I guess the point here, I'm not going to flog you all uh, for executing policies that have been decided by the White House. Uh, I'm holding President Biden responsible for many of the situations we have for child exploitation because he simply let the system get overwhelmed. Now, for people to say that Congress needs to need to pass new laws, explain to me how we haven't repealed any laws, but in the year following Trump transitioning, and I, I had disagreement with Trump. I believe that we have to immigrate more people and have more, paths to, uh, more pathways to citizenship, more guest worker program, more opportunities for people who really want the economic advantages of the United States 
to have an opportunity to do it. But this president has made it virtually impossible for us to talk about improving the, and funding the processes that you're going through because he simply multiplied the problem by almost a factor of four or five. If, again, you can extend the assumption that if 80% of the people are ultimately adjudicated to not have a viable asylum claim, then probably 80% of these unaccompanied children are not here because they're escaping oppression or fear of the country that they came from, but because they want an economic opportunity. But that is force, what, what that is doing is making it more difficult or virtually impossible for you to provide the kind of care for those young people who truly need the support of the United States and need safe placement in the community and continuous tracking while they're minors. Um, so I, you know, Mr. Chair, I hope that we get back to a reasonable discussion about immigration reform and about paths to citizenships. But until this administration wakes up to the problems that they've created by rescinding policies that were working in the prior administration, all we're gonna do is have these shouting matches. And the ones who lose are the children who are being exploited. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Tillis. And um, I do look forward to working with you on that project here in the Judiciary Committee. And I think between the chairman, Senator Durbin, and the ranking member, Senator Graham, both have very strong and long-lasting and sincere commitments to trying to do bipartisan immigration reform demonstrated by their actions. So I think we have a real prospect, and I hope that we're able to take advantage of it. And I thank, thank you for Thank you, Senator White House. And uh, Director Marcos, I also wanted to mention, I am going to, I was going to ask you a series of questions about the influx facility in Greensboro. I think it's in cold status now. I want to, I want to talk about that and understand when it could potentially be activated. So those will be submitted for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're most